Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well and welcome to, depending on wherever you may live, the middle of the night or early morning bonus upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click that like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to tonight's middle of the night or early morning bonus upload, shall we? All right, everybody. Today I have a subscriber who you guys in the comment section know and love. Um, Jane has come on to share uh, her Bigfoot encounter. She also has a couple of other uh, incidences that have happened. And if we can't get them in um, the 45 minute today, we'll have her back on. Jane, how are you? I'm great. How are you today, Jeff? I'm very good. Very good. Thank you for coming on. And, oh, it's my um, pleasure. Thank you for sharing your encounter with us. Uh, I'm very excited to hear it. I've been wanting to have you on for a couple of days, well, yeah. about a week and a half now, but uh, so we finally got you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so as you know, I don't direct so pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the floor to you and you can share your encounter with us. Alrighty. Well, I thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, we have to fade back to 1977. I had just been married in 76. So we were going on a, a cross country trip. We took two of those. We went for three weeks and we traveled up along the top of the country beautiful country, by the way. Our country is just gorgeous. And, uh, you know, we went to a lot of areas. Uh, there was an area in Wisconsin that I found was a very heavily treed area that I found to be a little creepy. Um, you kind of had that I'm being watched feeling. So, and my dogs didn't like it either. I had my two Dobermans with me, which I will refer to as the girls and, uh, loving and very protective. So we're traveling along, we get to Mount Rushmore, we see, we walk around Devil's Tower, and uh, which I was looking for the scene in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, not realizing that was a movie set. <laughs> but uh, we get out to Montana. Montana is where this happened. Um, beautiful country. We're driving along and uh, the husband at that time, uh, decides that he wants to pull down this it was called a road but there was no not even two tracks there was just grass like a kind of a very sloping valley and uh it was called i forget the name it was called a canyon and so there was uh it said camping so we drive down it took us we had to go very slow because we had to pick up with a camper uh, that you drove under and uh, attached that way and that is where the girls rode in the back. So we're driving down and I'm looking around. It took us a half hour to get to this very isolated, desolate camping uh, ground. It was a huge, um, like all dirt, was kind of a roundish area with tree, little small, short trees in the center. So we pull over in this one area and that was by kind of a little cliff. There was a river down below that was beautiful. I could walk around. I walked down there with the girls and uh, they 
very oddly enough, stuck right to me. They didn't want to leave my side. Um, and being Dobermans, you know, their ears are always up straight. Their ears were down and they kept smelling the air. I never smelled anything. And, uh, you know, they got a drink and, and I got some water and we did some stuff and I walked back up to the truck and, um, which it was beautiful there, I have to say, but I did feel rather isolated, but you know, John wanted to camp there. We did see another, uh, trailer type camper that, uh, that you drive, but never saw the people. And, uh, there was a few chairs and stuff and that was it. So we set up our stuff and, you know, I'm cooking. It was later in the day. And, uh, the whole time I noticed the girls hopped back in the camper. They didn't want to go around and explore. And I thought, well, that's kind of odd. And, uh, I'm, you know, just cooking around, cooking away. And, uh, it gets to be, I don't know, probably around 10 o'clock. And we decide to put the fire out. We were always very good about that. We get into the camper. The girls again did not want to come out to go to the bathroom and, uh, we're laying there talking. And the next thing I know, you see like this glow outside the curtains. I will never forget this. It's like even right now as I close my eyes, I'm jetted back to that horrendous kind of a chest punch feel. Um, very, very odd feeling, pressure to your chest. And I looked at John and he moved the curtain and standing next to our campfire was a Sasquatch. Um, oh, I, it, it just takes me back there. It's kind of brutal. Um, I'm looking at my ceiling. This creature was probably about eight feet tall. I'm going to guess he was sort of silhouetted. I couldn't really see his face, but he was standing there. He was your typical, like when you see a shadow of a Sasquatch, he, he had that very, um, kind of a pointed head no neck to speak of, very wide shoulders, big chest, um, looked very hairy, very, a very heavy creature, like very capable of pushing us over the cliff, which is what we were worried he was going to do. I mean, at that point, I, all I could feel was like this pit of my stomach fear. And I just remember looking at it and it started to rock back and forth. And uh, I remember thinking, oh, my God, it's going to just push us to the point where the truck just goes right over into the river. It was about a 15 foot drop. We weren't that close to the edge, but knowing what I know now, it would not have taken much for this creature to do this. And it just stood there. And I'm thinking this went on for a good 20 minutes of the terror. I mean, I looked at my dogs. My girls were laying on the floor of the camper. The poor things had urinated. They were totally terrified, terrified. I put towels under them on their beds and it was like you were afraid to move in the camper. You didn't want to make anything uh, shake or have it notice anything different. Yet I know it knew we were, we were in there that I don't know if it was a male or female. I know some people comment about that, but I don't know. I just, noticed a very heavily legged, heavily bodied creature. And like I said, it was rocking back and forth. And I know that that's a behavior of primates, not that I believe he's a Sasquatch is a primate, I don't, but I remember watching it thinking, what is he thinking? Like, what is he gonna do? And it was just, John and I kept looking, looking out the curtain and, I said to John, what if we just kick out the window in the back of the camper through the back of the truck and <clears throat> I can crawl through and we'll just get out of here because we could have worked our way around him, but John wouldn't do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, you know, for going cross country, we didn't have any kind of guns. We had nothing, nothing, not even a decent knife, really. And uh, I just remember the total, it's like this panic and that you've never felt before. And then 
I started to become extremely nauseous and John kept looking out and I looked a few times and it was doing the same thing. And we looked at one another and we didn't know what to do. And the next thing, this is the really weird part where people used to give me the eyes. The next thing I know we were waking up and it was about five 30 in the morning. I, it was like it happened in a flash. And I mean, <laughs> I know other people have had more one-on-one -on -one encounters, but I don't know what happened. I don't know. We just were out. So we got up, I got my dogs. I had to literally drag them out of the camper. We, I didn't really want to walk down to the river, but I did with them to wash them up a little and get them set. And as we're walking back, this creature I didn't realize was watching us. He was standing. I don't, I'm not good with distance, but, <clears throat> oh, I don't know. Maybe 50 or 60 yards or a little more away. There was like this little rise, like this little hill within the woods, not thick woods, but enough that so you could see his shadow, which I hadn't noticed when I stepped out of the camper. <clears throat> no, excuse me. And uh, this creature let out this scream, this bellowing scream that I will never, ever forget as long as I live. It brought back, I had an immediate pressure to my chest. I, I looked at John. I think he had the same thing because he brought his hand to his chest. I, I again felt nauseous and I looked, said to him, we have to get out of here. Side. So we got the girls back in, got the two chairs in, and, and we took off. And it was just brutal the entire time because I'm pretty sure it was following us out. And uh, we got out to the main road. Now, again, I, you know, we were in Montana. And we see this little general store, very cool place. We wanted to stop and just kind of shake off as much as we could of this whole thing, because it was kind of terrifying, actually. It, it really made you wonder what was going to happen. And we go in the store, and there's this great little wooden floored store, pot belly stove, um, general store. And this little old man sitting there in his overalls, white hair, you know, long white hair and a beard. And John's talking to him, and I'm walking around. And the next thing I know, they're waving me over and I'm like you know I came over and the gentleman says to me he says young woman he said is it your time and I looked at him and I'm like what how does he know John must have told him what happened and I he, I looked at him I said excuse me and he goes your time and then I realized what he meant time of month and mm -hmm. I immediately became so creeped out by that thought even hmm. and I said yes it actually was and he looked at john he said don't bring her anywhere to camp unless there are other people around and he said they they've had women abducted never seen again god knows what happened to them I, you know you don't know and it was just it was it was one of those things that i will never as long as i live forget and it was a couple of years later after we were divorced. I remember I was at my parents asleep on the couch and my dad was watching what we always watch. We watched uh, One Step Beyond and all the, the Leonard Nimoy um, in search of program. So I was always into, you know, the Sasquatch thing. Well, I wake up sitting up straight in a cold sweat because they had imitated, somewhat had imitated the scream. And it's a very distinct um kind of awe-inspiring but frightening sound and it kind of goes right through you and I sat up and my poor dad looked at me and he goes he goes oh my god kid what's wrong and it was at that point I told my dad what happened and he of course believed me and my parents believed me but this is the first time I've really ever talked about it because people give you you know a hard time and um I've always lived around water uh, right now. I mean, I'm, there's a brook here on my pro our property and a river. 
and we have quite a bit of activity um, outside that I, I know to be. I'm looking at two trees right now that have been bent over, and uh, I know that's one of their marking signs, I believe. We've heard a lot of tree knocking. I have heard the, um, not the real chimp whoop type of noise, but a woo-woo like that. And for years, I always thought that was just some type of bird because where I lived in New Milford, there was a lot of activity. At that time, I had three Rottweilers and a Doberman, great animals. I had such good dogs. And there were nights when I would open the back door to let them out and they would not walk out that door. And the smell, the smell was just, oh, just kill you. A very sulfury, um, very musky kind of a raccoon bear, but not a bear, because I, I, I know that smell. So I know they were around there also, but here on this property where I'm living, this was my parents' home and we took it over. There is a lot of activity and things going on out in these woods. And uh, and I know that they're here. Um, I've heard that there was someone that heard a lot of screams. I have not heard the screams. Like I said, we have um, a lot of signs of them. I've never seen any footprints. But every time I see something that I know is them, it just brings me back to that Montana encounter that happened and another thing actually that happened along that trip we got out of montana and we got into california it was beautiful the beaches we were it was a very desolate beach um let's see the beach was on the one side there was tall grass and the parking lot kind of a road that you could drive through and on the other side of that were the coastal redwoods just huge huge giant trees and beautiful so we stop and we figure we're going to stop at the beach and, and walk around and, and take a look at that and there Jane, was like sorry to cut you off to... but were oh. you were you up in northern california like up by Humboldt yes. county yes in oh. northern california okay and um i'm sorry i should have said that no that's fine and uh you know, we're walking along the water, the dogs are running around, and then all of a sudden, the girls stop, they look at us, and they run run to the camper. And I looked hmm. into the tree line, and I saw a shadow, and I said to John, don't look, but we actually need to go back to the truck and leave. Now, I didn't really see anything more than a shadow, but you could, and I've heard many people describe this, you could feel that you were being watched you just knew they were watching you and I was like oh my god on the heels of what happened in Montana I said I, I can't do this and uh so we left and uh you know we traveled around and and uh like I said that was that was the encounter and that was the kind of a, a small second encounter and that was basically it other than I'm having a lot of activity in these woods like ongoing activity and there's many times when I'm outside at night with my little dog Louie that he's a little mini pin who thinks he's a Rottweiler <laughs> and he gets he'll stand there and I'll hear things out in the woods like a a snort and I'll think well that's probably a deer but eh, it's a little off I have heard uh one of the nights, about a week and a half ago, Louie and I were outside, and I heard what I thought was an owl, like this, hoo, hoo, but it wasn't exactly right. It wasn't like two nights after that, I definitely was hearing an owl. I, I wasn't sure what that was, but that was an owl. This particular night that I'm talking about with Lewis outside, this noise was very close to us. I believe it was like right down on the other side of the driveway. And Louis stiffened up, his ears went back, and I looked at him, and I looked out there, and I heard it again. And I grabbed him and went inside, and I could hear something walking around outside that, you know, we have a lot of deer that come through. We have a bear that comes through. We have little bobcat and a cougar that is around. So we have a lot of animal activity. 
but I do believe the apex predator was out there kind of walking around the property because I've had my bird feeders. It looks like they're vandalized and I thought it was bare at first, but now I'm not sure. Um, so that's, that's basically what I've had going on um, as far as, you know, the Sasquatch and that's kind of an ongoing thing. Right now, really um, quick, what state are you in now? I'm in Connecticut. Connecticut. Okay. Yeah. I'm in Connecticut. And um, one night I even heard, I don't know if you guys remember when I was, I'm 65. So when I was a kid, we used to have these little clickers and they clicked a very distinctive metal click. And another night, here I am with little Lewis outside and I hear click, 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 like five clicks. And that was definitely in my driveway. I don't really know what that was, but I have never heard anything that sounded like that before other than uh, playing with those things as a kid. It was the same noise. Yeah, it was like a um, little aluminum thing that click, click, click. Yeah. Yes, yes, I remember those things. Yeah, and <clears throat> I mean, I well, no, you know what? I have heard some whistling, but I'm... It's hard to know, you know, exactly. I've, I've heard that periodically. But mainly, it's a lot of tree knocking. We've had quite a bit of that. That's very obvious what that is. And uh, I just think that, I don't know. I mean, I know there's other places that are highly active, but I definitely believe we have, you know, one or two of these beings around. And it's my feeling that they travel seasonally, I think, because I have a quite a nice little brook going through the property that comes down to the big river there. And I kind of think they're following the river with the seasons and they go and they, I don't know if they den up or, or how they live, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much what's going on. <laughs> that's, that makes a lot of sense about the traveling. I mean, like I, I've talked about it and I believe that they use, the waterways as a natural roadway. I mean, it's perfect. They, they don't really yep. have to, I mean, how, how, how often are people down by a river? You know, yeah, they, there's always people down there, but you know, they can just travel in the inside wood, wood line and not be seen. And then at night, just haul ass right through yep. on the river bed or what stream bed or whatever. Um, exactly. The, and we do have a lot of woods here. There's a farm okay. next door. And the river is surrounded really by woods. There's houses like mine, but they're pretty far back. So, you know, like you were saying, I, I definitely think these creatures can follow the, the water line for quite a long way. Yeah. You know, this is a pretty big, pretty big uh, river. Yeah. Now, the thing that really kicked in for me when you were talking about the Montana thing is that uh -huh. it kind of validated something that Victor had said a while ago with the female agents and why people were like, why don't you have female Ugh. agents? That's a real validation. Um, I do know that when I have Kunbo back on, he's going to share something along the line of um, what you just shared with us too. But, I mean, that just puts a whole new perspective oh, yeah. on these things for me. Uh, and, you know, because you just, you really Absolutely. don't think that, you know, we're a whole different species. And you wouldn't think mm -hmm. that, that that would be anything that would be interested in. But who knows, you know, they're not. But they are, apparently. Yeah. I mean... You know, from what that older gentleman told me, they, they had abducted I mean, you know, they'd go out to hang up their laundry and just never show, you know, reappear. And um, the other thing that bugged me about it, Jeff, was that I can't remember, like I remember about, and the reason I remember approximately 20 minutes because John had a watch on, and then all of a sudden, like nothing, like I didn't dream I, I don't know. I woke up, sat up, and we looked at each other, and it was like about 5.30 in the morning. It's like there's this whole 
period of time that kind of freaks me out as to what happened. I mean, it, it wasn't just the time of month thing, which really creeped me out. Right. Um, but that whole instance where you just, am I just blocking it or, or did we really, did it just use like an infrasound and just put us out? I mean, you know, the rocking back and forth too. Yeah, the swaying, the creepy. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Like, what are you thinking? You yeah. know, and ugh, I don't know. You know, I would just have to warn, especially women traveling, you know, be very cautious about where you go and and, and that kind of thing, because I, I believe they're all over. I, wherever I've lived, I've been near water and they have been around me, you know, and I could feel them kind of. You could kind of feel that they're there. And uh, I would just always caution women, especially for, you know, going hiking or, or whatever you're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. That When I asked about Northern California, <clears throat> like we got Hobalt County and, you know, there's been a lot of disappearances up there. Oh, and, really? Yeah. Well, some people say... It's because, or Humboldt, Humboldt County, it's because the, uh -huh. um, the marijuana trade, um, it's where they grow a lot of the marijuana seasonally in upper, uh, some of the best pot, I guess, in the world is grown up there. <laughs> but <Okay. clears throat> what happens is during the grow season at the end, these kids travel you know, like the little, you know. Oh, harvesters. Yes. And they go and they uh, they get hired oh by the growers to clip and stuff. And there's just tons of missing people in that area. And, Ugh. you know, female, male. I'm wondering if that has anything to, you know, do with it. I think I'm going to do a little bit of a investigation on that and kind of look into that a little bit because... Who knows? It must I mean, be an attractant. Yeah, yeah. You know, because hunters use uh, a variety of things to attract the, the bucks. And, but it just, it always amazed me when I thought about it. Like, I do, you know, I, I believe Melba Ketchum's uh, research mm -hmm. because she proved it over and over about them being, you know, a percentage human and then the other is unknown. Right. So maybe that's the connection that they're not totally disconnected from us. But, you know, I mean, it's just odd that it would be attracted to the point where it came down. I don't even know how it started to stir the fire up. I right. have no idea because we put water on that. And I will just never forget seeing that glow and that flame, that roar, uh, glow, glow through the curtains. I will never forget that. I, I couldn't imagine what it was. And then when I saw. Now he didn't look right at you or did he, did you, did you see any eye shine or any? No, no, no because he was standing He's next to the fire. Right? Okay. Yep. But he was standing. You could tell he was, he, Jeff, he was 15 feet away from us. Right. And he just stood there <laughs> rocking back and forth. And I'm like, Oh my God. And I, and I looked and I'm like, but really I could only see a silhouette. I mean, you know, and that was it, but it was definitely a very large looming silhouette. Yeah. Very large. That's terrifying. I mean, and then, and then to have it, to have it, uh, validated with the old guy at the store on top oh. of, on top of the totally odd, <laughs> odd question, you know, I mean, but, you know, it's at least you got some sort of answer out of mm -hmm. that. You know, not, probably not the answer you wanted, but at, at least it's an answer. So Yeah, I, I forget what he said to John about, because John told him how we were watching it, and all of a sudden, here we were waking up, and the gentleman said something. I don't remember exactly what it was about what it can do to people, but... You know, that was after what he, when he asked me about my time. And right. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. Well, we are about 35 minutes in. Um, we got about 10 minutes. We, 
I know you got some other stuff you want to share. Um, if you want to come back, I'm thinking about kind of branching off and doing like a little bit of paranormal. Um, oh, other stuff. I have so much stuff. If that's something that you're interested <laughs> in, um, and doing like a whole little paranormal stuff and sharing that with us. Um, Absolutely. We can. It's been an interesting life, my friend. I'm sure. I'm sure. So after, <laughs> after, uh, we end the interview, I will stay on the phone with you and then we can figure out a day that works for both of us. All right. All right. All right. Is there anything you'd like to say to everybody before we let every let you go? Well, you know, my mom had a saying and I, and I'm always reminded of it. I know it's not an exact quote, but she said, there are stranger things in heaven and earth than dreamt of by man. And it definitely applies. And to the women out there, be very, very careful. And to the men, when you go out hunting, just be really careful to stay frosty, stay very aware, use your peripheral, because that's where these things work. You know, they, they show up and they watch you and just be careful, you know? Yeah. Be safe. Some sound Stay together, advice. don't drift apart. Sound advice right there. <laughs> so... All right. Well, well, thank you. Thank you. It was great having you You're on. Welcome. And we'll talk soon. All right. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Jane. I'm going to have Jane back on very soon. Uh, this is an older interview that I did with her. And, you know, she is the channel's godmother. She welcomes everybody to the channel and really just extends this kind of warm welcoming uh, blessing to everybody that, that is new to the channel. And she's just an amazing person, really amazing. I'm, I'm glad to, uh, to, to know her. Uh, she really means a lot to me. And she's got some very interesting experiences uh, that have happened in the last five years since we've last talked um or no about four years this interview was so uh when i get her back on that's going to be a great great interview um i chatted with her about a week ago in regards to everything i was going through and, and still am going through with my dad and everything i just needed uh a friend and jane was there like she always is she's just a great person to this channel so thank you jane also, thank you all for supporting the channel. Your support is what makes the channel continue to grow and go and what makes it special, a place for people to share their experiences, their ideas and theories without any judgment. With that, everyone stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real out there and they are dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time. Never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.